There are 168 hours in a week. We go to church for one hour. What about the other 167? Cue this podcast. We're here to bring the church to you the rest of the week. I'm David Vogel, the Director of Communication here at Central Community Church. I'm Corey Broddle, the Director of Community. We've been to the one hour in church. Now welcome to the other 167. We are here today with Pastor Aaron Varner. Um, For those of you who have watched the last couple of episodes or listened to, you'll know that he was actually guest hosting with me. But today we have decided to flip the table and make him the guest and interview him about something that we have probably not prepared him well enough for the questions we're going to ask. But I have to also be careful because he's my boss. He's the administrative pastor here at the church. So watch um, yourself. I'm going to watch what I say really closely. But we're here today to talk about soul care and not foot soul care, but Good soul one. soul care. Yes. So Pastor Aaron, a um, lot going on in the world right now. Yeah. Election, COVID. Let's see, the holidays are coming up. That's a big one. Just normal busyness, um, like even like being a mom of three, lots of busyness. So the question is, how during all of this do we take care of our soul? It's a, it really is a great question. And a part of it is understanding a little bit of what, mm. what the soul is. And mm. I find that that's one of the hardest things is it's hard to take care of something that you don't know what it is. Yeah. It's almost like this COVID type of stuff where it's like, so much is going on, but COVID is a non-seen thing. Mm-hmm. And so to make sure that you're staying away from it, um, to, to keep yourself healthy, it's hard to do. So the same thing with if you try to take care of your soul and have this soul soul care in the midst of all this chaos, it's, it's really hard if you don't identify what it is. And so mm-hmm. I think that's one of the hardest things as Christians. If somebody just says, what is the soul? I have mm-hmm. to be honest with you. It's such a loaded yeah question (laughs) that it's it's hard to say this is how you take care of it because it's hard to even describe what it is the best way that i've um, figured it out is to to explain is kind of it's the the mind the will and the body all working in um in unison it's Mm. the infusion of those working together and um it's really interesting because um i almost find that um if i don't give my soul space to work um, if I if I take control with my will hmm. or my body yeah. or my mind, um, I haven't given it the space to, to flourish that it needs to. So it has to be those three and one where I just offer space to my soul. And that's the best way for me to do soul care. Wow, that's already so deep. <laughs> I, I feel like we could do a podcast. Podcast is over. Thanks for joining us. That. But really, so will, mind. And, and the body, body yeah. all working together. Yeah. So you're saying you're taking care of your soul when you give that all time. Can you give like specifics on that? Yeah, so I, I think the, the hardest part, to be honest with you, is that we want the soul to flourish. We want to be healthy mm-hmm. in our soul, but we act as if it's just a one-time thing and it's a one and done. Uh, I believe that soul, to take care of your soul is, is to train it. Um, how to work well. You, you can't just go into school and ace a test. You can't just mm. go to the mm. weight room and just expect that you're all of a sudden going to be able to do so much um, so much muscle movement or lift so much weight. You can't just run 16 miles without training. And so the you same shouldn't. thing needs <laughs> that's true. <laughs> the, the same thing needs to go for um, your soul in that you, you really um, train your soul. So um, I'm huge on the Enneagram. I think yes. you and I, you guys mm-hmm. have talked about that before with me. Um, and maybe that will be on a podcast at some point. It has but to be now. So the, I know. I'm sorry. The pressure's on. So, so the whole thing is that there's a, a triad and there's the, um, there's the, head, heart, and the gut. Mm. And so each one of us um, kind of associates with one of the three a lot more than the other. I'm a head person, as you probably can see from this podcast. I like to think through things. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times what happens is I interact with Christ in a head way. Okay, it's it's all in thinking about who he is. But when I take care of my soul, I also need to take care of the how do I interact with Christ through my body? How do I Mm. interact with Christ through my heart? Um, And so that's kind of a little bit more of what I'm talking about, if if that made any sense. Yeah, definitely makes sense. So you you talk about this, but so it's soul care. You you have to be intentional about it. Um, And so quiet time, I think, is probably a really big part of that. For me, and I, we're fortunate in the sense that we all work at a church. Like, we literally have a sanctuary next to our office to go. But so I'll take time, and I'll go to the chapel, for example, and I'll sit. 
and I'll try and have quiet time. And yet my mind is yeah. just racing. How do you still yourself just to, just to be present yeah. with, with God, with the spirit and just have your soul be open I was really hoping I got to ask that question of you because I still struggle with that. You know, <laughs> there, there's this thing of sometimes when you're in ministry, um, the the idea is that yeah, there is a sanctuary right next door, and so you think that we would have just all that time just to do that and that desire. And while we have that desire, sometimes we get so busy working for God that we miss the working with God life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how sometimes I see it is that the slowing down is intentional, it needs to be intentional, mm -hmm. but it doesn't need to slow down for a task. It needs to slow down for a relationship, mm. okay? So anytime you have a relationship, you have to provide space, you have to provide grace, yeah. and um, you, you have to almost provide some accountability for a healthy relationship with other people here, here on this earth, but then also receive that from the Lord. Um, so it's not just something that we, we go in and we just go, okay, I'm gonna make this a task, and stop what I'm doing and then turn my mind off. Mm -hmm. It is it is intentionally trying to engage um, the, the heart, the will, the, the body into going, Lord, how can I do this in relationship with you and not just for you because it's not a transaction, it's a relationship. And what I'm hearing is it's not like we brought up quiet time. It's not just those 30 minutes that you've set aside. Yeah. It's all throughout the day. It's every minute. Yeah. Of, you know every second of every minute of every hour throughout the day it's, that you're you're yeah. working on that you really have to train yourself you have to be cognizant of it you can't it doesn't just happen and that's what I expect yeah. you sit down you expect okay here I am it's quiet time but it's it's all day and everything you're doing exactly and um, I, I love this book um, called Soul Keeping by John Ortberg and he talks a lot in there about um, his relationship with Dallas Willard and um, who's a great theo theologian and um, spiritual disciplines um, guru. And one of the things he said was, it's not the first 15 minutes of the day that I'm concerned of for mm -hmm. you. It's the next 23 hours and 45 mm -hmm. minutes. And that's the with God life that our soul needs. Uh, our soul needs that, that space and that grace and that accountability that I talked about to, to integrate life together with God. Um, so often we, we think about we need to be in the Word, and it's this, this task thing of this quiet time of being in the Word in Scripture. But Scripture actually says that Jesus is the Word. Mm -hmm. And so if we, um, if we leave our Bible in our quiet time, if we leave that space and don't take Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit with us, mm -hmm. we're not with the Word um, the whole day. And, and so that's a lot of that soul care that we, we try to talk about and providing space for your soul is um, and stilling your soul is realizing that this is a 24 hour, seven day a week mm -hmm. exercise in living with yeah. Jesus. I, I, this, maybe this is putting you on the spot, but can you give us a personal example that oh my just help people to relate? <clears throat> or some tips, like tips, yeah. maybe some tips, because this is, it is, like I said, it yeah. is kind of deep and it's a different way of thinking. Like yeah. I'm very task oriented and I'm very do that check mm -hmm. mark thing. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing this all throughout the day, yeah. what are some tips to help out with that? So I, I think my main tip that I would give is to surround yourself with people who are not like you. Okay. Mm. It's easy for me to engage with mind people because I like to use my mind. But a lot of times I need to be around the heart people and the gut people who mm -hmm. teach me how to love Christ through body or, or teach me how to love Christ through emotions um, and not just through head knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the what I would say a tip would be there is surround yourself with those people who will speak life into you mm -hmm. um, so that they can help you engage the other parts that you might be weakest in. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned, I was actually going to ask you about resources, but you mentioned one book, Soul Keeping. Yeah. So Christmas is coming up, so if maybe somebody wanted to start putting together a list of books or other resources for their Christmas list, that would also yeah. be beneficial uh, for their spiritual life. Do you have any other suggestions or authors that you like? I, I would say number one is that book, Soul Keeping mm -hmm. by John Orberg. I, it's one book that I try to read every single year. I know in our young adults class, The Gathering, we've gone through it a couple times. Mm -hmm. And each time it's it's something that's just, it's powerful. Um, so I would say if nothing else, just put that book mm -hmm. on your wish list, get it, 
and read it and probably read it again. Okay. Um, seriously, I, I could give you more resources, but that would be the one that I would start with, and that would be the one that I would go back to over and over again. Great. I've actually did, I was in that class with you, and yeah. I, I think we did. Did we do it twice? Yeah. But then we went through it with staff. Yep. Also, David, mm. I don't think you were, no. oh, you missed out. It was yep. really good. We got together every weekend, went through a chapters at a time and really dug into the soul. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I've been through it three times, but I'm really glad that you mentioned it again. And just this podcast, because pulling it out again now is so needed. Yeah. Just like I said, with the chaos going on with COVID, mm-hmm. the holidays coming up, just that reminder of taking care of our soul. It's just so yeah. important. So um, I'm really excited to get back into that and get my highlighter yeah. and my pen <laughs> and, and start jotting down because that's yeah. how I read my books. So. And I'm going to Amazon so. right now. Yes. <laughs> you should do it. One of the last things I would say to you is that that's important in soul keeping in that book was He said one of the most awkward things that really helped him, and this is maybe a tip that I could add to Mm -hmm. that, is to speak to your soul. And it sounds so weird, and it feels so weird, but as you read through, especially um, the book of Psalms, you see all these times where it says, why are you so downcast, O my soul? Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the the author that David's writing, well, Oh, my soul, why are you so downcast? And it's almost like speaking to the soul. So John Ortberg gives an example in the book where he says he got so angry at something, and then he just stopped and he said, why are you so angry, oh, my soul? Mm. And it sounds so weird because you're talking to yourself and it sounds like you're schizophrenic. (laughs) But I've found that one of the things that to um, acknowledge that my soul is a part of me and it's a part of the spiritual being inside of me Mm. is to speak to the soul so that I can communicate with Christ more. Yeah. That's you. uh, For me, the the soul is such a, it's an abstract thought, but but to think of it as part of you, it's just that that's a really good reminder. And uh, I'm going to have some thinking to do. And I did just order that book, like literally right there. <laughs> you got Amazon it's ordered. right there. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about it with you. Oh, well, um, this has been a really great podcast. And I really think we could even do this again down the road and even go into more details. Maybe once everybody orders that soul keeping <laughs> book, we can do a little. And we are not endorsed by. No. By the publisher on any yes, way no <laughs> absolutely not no but it is a really good book so um i'm gonna start reading it again david's obviously gonna, gonna start, start reading, reading it, it again <laughs> so maybe we can pull you back in yeah, you and we can do a little review of the book sounds great i would love it thanks pastor aaron yeah you bet thank you thanks for listening to 167 please leave us a five-star review on apple podcasts stitcher or wherever you're listening from and to keep up with everything at central community church follow us on facebook and instagram and if you want to watch us record this podcast live find us on youtube we think the 167 hours between church services are so important and we hope you'll share this episode with your friends join us next week